and one. And welcome everybody to this very special administrative meeting um, tonight, Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, 5 p.m. via Zoom conference. I call this meeting to order and it's always a good meeting when we have more than twice as many proclamations and acknowledgements than we do approval items. So I know we're gonna, we're gonna start off on a really good note. And so we'll start off with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by my very own special assistant, Joe Noriega. I pledge allegiance mm -hmm. to the flag of the United, United States, States of America mm -hmm. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joe. And thank you for everything you do every day for the people of District 5. This is kind of a District 5 meeting tonight. We've got a lot of District 5 people here. So, um, <clears throat> Madam County Manager, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? I know there are. Madam Chair and Commissioners, yes, we have three. The first one is item 3A. Acknowledgement of Emma Potts to be added to the agenda as item 4D, as in dog, under proclamations. The next one is item 3B, acknowledgement of Mark Chavez to be added to the agenda item as item 4E, under proclamations. And lastly, item 7A, fiscal year 2021, third quarter reconciliation be removed from consent and added a, to adoption of resolution as item 8A is an apple, and a vote is required for these changes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. So I will move to approve those changes. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Casada. All in favor, raise your hand. And Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Barboa. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Commissioner O'Malley. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. So called. Thank you so much. So digging right into our proclamations, I'm actually asking for a special favor tonight. I know Emma Holtz asked to um, be acknowledged early on because she she's a Truman scholar. So she has a lot of important things to do after this. So um, if that's OK, I would like for hers to go first. Um, and I know that we have several guest speakers um, in regards to the proclamations this evening. So um, as, as chair, I'm gonna use my executive privilege and just go ahead and acknowledge Emma Holtz. So I will, and I see she's on the screen. Um, I will read you the acknowledgement. Um, <laughs> Acknowledgement, the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners does hereby acknowledge Emma Holtz, 2021 Truman Scholar. Acknowledging Emma Holtz is an undergraduate student at the University of New Mexico studying political science and sociology. And acknowledging Ms. Holtz has been chosen as one of 62 new Truman Scholars for 2021 out of 845 nominations received by the Truman Foundation and acknowledging that Truman scholars <clears throat> demonstrate academic excellence, outstanding leadership potential and a commitment to a career in government or the nonprofits, nonprofit sector and acknowledging the hard work and devotion of Ms. Holtz to education and public service through serving as a research assistant to the UNM Food and Housing Insecurity Project, while also developing a UNM Asian Pacific American Culture Center, and acknowledging as a Truman Scholar, Ms. Holtz will receive funding for graduate studies, leadership training, career counseling, and special internship and fellowship opportunities within the federal government. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners conveys its sincere congratulations and honors the accomplishments of Emma Holtz as a 2021 Truman Scholar, done this 20th day of April, 2021 in Bernalillo County, 
state of New Mexico presented this day, April 20, 2021, and signed by all the commissioners. And I know, Emma, you're going to say a few words, but first I want to have someone from your past say a few nice things about you. Trey Smith, currently the principal at East Mountain High School, would like to say a few words to you. Thank you. Can you hear me all right out there? Good. Excellent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening. Thank you, Commissioners, for having me. Um, my name is Trey Smith. I'm, I'm the principal and head school administrator at East Mountain High School, a public charter school located in Sandia Park um, and proud alma mater of Emma Holtz. So the Truman Scholarship recognizes outstanding commitment to leadership and public service, and I am so glad that they saw what many of us have known for years, is, which is that Emma is a selfless leader who puts others before herself and works tirelessly for causes that she's passionate about. I'm happy to have known Emma for the better part of a decade. Um, I've gotten to know her very well through our world travels together and through many projects for the community. When she was just a freshman on, uh, in high school, I had the opportunity to take Emma and 12 other students on a trip to Beijing and Hong Kong. And Emma was by far the most mature leader on that journey. And when she was just a sophomore, I coached Emma as part of a three person debate team that was ranked top eight in the world, uh, top eight debate teams in the world. And she debated in the final rounds in New York City. And she is still the only student to ever serve as student body president two years in a row at our school, both junior year and senior year. Uh, and all of that was just high school. And um, since then, she's gone on to the same levels of leadership and dedication at UNM. And as you can read from the press release, she's made lifelong impacts to the university through her leadership as an ASUNM senator, spearheading the effort to develop the first Asian Pacific American Culture Center there. But impressive resume aside, Emma is by far one of the best people I've ever known personally. As one of her mentors for these years, I've always found that Emma doesn't ask what she needs to do to get ahead. Emma asks what she needs to do to lift up those around her. And that's, that's what true leadership is. And I think our school, our county, our state can be proud knowing that Emma is out there fighting the good fight for all of us. I'm thrilled that the Truman Organization saw those qualities in her because I can think of no one more deserving. And Emma is also no stranger to adversity. While we've all experienced a lot of sadness this year, um, Emma has experienced great loss as well, including just in the past month. But I believe it's her resiliency in the face of tragedy and her commitment in the wake of sadness that makes this recognition tonight by the commission even more poignant. So thank you for letting me share some thoughts this evening and thank you, Emma, for all you've given us. And thank you, Principal Smith. Um, I see Mike Wismer on here, who is also associated with East Mountain High School. Do you, would you, do you wanna wish Emma well? I'm, I think you know her, right? I know you're here for another proclamation. So uh, yes. did you wanna say a few words? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yes, um, I would be remiss if I didn't want to stand up and cheer one of our own from East Mountain. Emma has done a tremendous job for us in the community, and she's a leader in her school, and she deserves this um, more than anyone. And we really, really appreciate having Emma here in the East Mountains and at our East Mountain High School. And I can't be, I would be remiss if I didn't say, Thank goodness for a good principal who allows students like Emma to excel. <laughs> Thank you for that. And now Ms. Holtz, would you like to say a few words? We'd love to hear from you. Sure, I'll definitely keep it really short. I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but um, thank you so much for recognizing me tonight. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I'm honestly still in shock that I was actually awarded like the Truman Scholarship, but um, I'm very humbled and very honored to be able to represent um, my home state and um, 
each and every one of you in um, this opportunity. And I'm really excited to be able to represent New Mexico as well as just even like the East Mountains. Um, Cause I think, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know the history of the Truman Scholarship, but I think um, it's been a really long time since someone even from UNM has been recognized. It's um, the last person that was recognized was in 2014. Um, so I'm really honored just to be able to be able to represent UNM and the East Mountains and um, just New Mexico. Um, so it's a really great opportunity and I'm excited to make a lot of networking and make or make connections through the different networking opportunities that the Truman Foundation offers. Um, and I'm really excited for the future as well to be able to represent New Mexico in that way. So thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. And I just have a, yay. I just have a couple of, two quick questions. Um, where are you going to graduate school and what will your program be? That is a great question. Um, so I'm currently a junior, um, so I'll be applying in the fall, um, but I plan to apply to law school in the fall. Um, so I do not have um, a specific law school yet, obviously. I'm still working on, I have to take the LSAT over the summer. Um, so I'm hoping for the best, but I don't have a specific um, one that I'm 100% sure about, you know, so, um, but yes, <laughs> um, probably like a JD MPP in the future. Great. Um, I saw that you have a double major now, right? Political science and sociology. Yes. And my, my first master's was in sociology. It's one of the best degrees you can get. So district five, high five to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And thank you. Thank you for all the work you've done to, to earn the Truman Scholarship and for representing us so well, the East Mountains, Bernalillo County, and the state of New Mexico. Thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. Okay. And you feel free to, to stay and listen in or log off as you need to do. Okay. So then moving on to National Volunteer Week and Vice Chair Casada will present and then we'll have some members from our boards and commissions speak after this proclamation. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members of the commission. Um, this is a great honor. Um, you know, we always say uh, it takes a village uh, to raise a village and, and, and volunteers are the villagers. Um, they're the ones who step up and really take that to heart. So it's my honor to read this proclamation uh, on uh, National Volunteer Week. This has been signed by all county commissioners, whereas volunteers are a tremendous asset and have had a positive and sustaining influence upon our community and their many areas of service of Bernalillo County, generations of selfless individuals have served our communities, each person enriching the lives of others dedicated to making all of our tomorrows better than today. And whereas volunteers are the essence of the schools, our faith-based communities, homeless shelters, hospitals, uh, crisis hotlines, soup kitchens, and volunteers on various boards and commissions. And whereas the spirit of volunteerism grows stronger in the face of even the most challenging situations, including many aspects of the COVID-19 crisis, and whereas it is fitting to honor many individuals who lead their time, skill, and effort to making our communities better places. And whereas community county volunteers represent all walks of life, supplemented among various ages, education, and experience, and employed, um, retired of all races and creeds, their compassion is a testament to the generosity of the American spirit. And whereas Bernalillo County government has over 120 volunteers serving on its various appointed boards and commissions dedicated their time and skill to serve Bernalillo County residents, along with hundreds of volunteers serving in the county government programs. And whereas National Volunteer Week is a 47 year old tradition enacted in 1974 that designates a special time to recognize and celebrate the contributions of volunteers. 
And now, therefore, be it resolved that Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners does hereby extend its heartfelt gratitude and support to Bernalillo County volunteers as we honor and recognize the week of April 18th, 2021 as National Volunteers Week. And the board encourages all Bernalillo County residents to serve the community and to observe this week by volunteering across our county and pledging to make service a part of their daily lives. Done this 20th day of April, 2021 in Bernalillo County, State of New Mexico, signed by all Bernalillo County commissioners. And I believe, uh, Madam Chair, we have mm -hmm. a few speakers this evening. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, who's first? Well, I see Michael Brasher is unmuted. So why don't you go first? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And and thank you very much for the recognition. We appreciate it. It's an honor to serve the county commissioners from, from Bernalillo County and the staff of Bernalillo County. And County Manager uh, Baca, thank you very much. And, and Mr. Martinez, thank you for assisting on, on the MDC committee and Chairman Rick Mietta and, and the volunteers uh, who serve on that committee. I will say, and, and I say it from time to time that that uh, the volunteers who serve on some of the committees that I'm on uh, give of their time. It's not free time, it has a real value and they make a really tremendous contribution to Bernalillo County and the fine work that's going on in the jail and the fine work that's going on at the Board of Trustees at uh, UNMH. So uh, just a note to say thank you all very much. We, it is appreciated and it is an honor to serve uh, Bernalillo County and the fine work that you do. So thank you very much. And commissioners, thank you for your volunteer time that you put in the extra time. You don't get paid a lot of money, but but the work is 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 hard, difficult at times and is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brasher. How do you know what it's like to be a commissioner? You know, I, I was there once and, and, <laughs> and enjoyed the work and enjoyed the work in your district. And I think right. you do a fine, and I think you do a fine job. District five high five. Thank you so much, Mr. Brasher. I appreciate that. Thank and you. so next, um, Michael Wismer, do you want to go next? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm here to represent the one of your newest uh, commissions or boards and commissions, that is the Sheriff's Office Advisory and Review Board. And on behalf of our chair, uh, Judge Jewell, I would like to thank the Bernalillo County Commission for setting up a very well-written and articulate ordinance that set this commission, this board into motion. We are all very thankful for the opportunity to serve on this commission, especially given um, the national atmosphere with respect to law enforcement. It helps tremendously commissioners to know that we have a clear guidelines that were um, written in your original ordinance and we are striving to achieve that. We have so far established rules of procedure. We've established a vision. We've established a method for community engagement and a community relations, community outreach plan and we hope to be able to formalize a final report, a re, an annual report, as you have asked us to do um, in, by, by next year. And uh, we are um, gifted to have two uh, deputy uh, um, undersheriffs from Bernalillo County Sheriff's uh, Office on our um, board. And um, it seems to be working very well. Had you not given, had the vision to establish a board that was um, geared towards community engagement, we wouldn't be in this place right now. So we want to really offer our thanks for first setting this up, setting it up properly and giving us all a chance to volunteer. All seven of us are working towards the same goal of um, balancing community engagement and policing operations and procedures and making them as transparent and as clear as possible. So thank you on behalf of Chair Jewell and the entire board. Thank you, Mr. Wismer, and thank you for stepping up to serve. Um, Vice Chair Casada, Julianne, do you know if there are other people to speak on this proclamation? Madam Chair, those are the only two that I see um, in on the meeting, so I think we're fine. Okay, thank you. 
So I'll just give a big hand to all the people who volunteer for everything throughout all our communities. Good job. Um, thank you. And so moving on to Mental Health Awareness Month proclamation, Commissioner Benson to present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's an honor to, to read this proclamation as a, a psychology major in college and a volunteer on a uh, mental health clinics board um, in its home. And we've all been affected one way or another by uh, mental health issues. And so uh, either personally or through loved ones. So the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners announced that whereas mental health is essential to overall health and well-being and is real and prevalent in our nation, affecting millions of people each year, and whereas Mental Health Awareness Month has been observed in May since 1949 and is recognized throughout the world, as communities raise awareness. And whereas approximately one in five adults in the U.S. experiences mental illness in a given year, approximately one in 25 adults in the U.S. experiences a serious mental health illness that substantially interferes with major life activities. And approximately one in five youth ages 13 to 18 experience a severe mental disorder at some point during their life. And whereas the average delay between the onset of symptoms and treatment in the United States is 11 years, and whereas we see too often the tragic consequences of untreated mental illness in our community from substance use to increased risk of chronic disease and suicide. And whereas with early treatment, individuals with mental illness can achieve remission and recovery. And whereas each person shares the burden of mental illness and has a responsibility to promote the mental wellness of and support prevention efforts for others. Whereas Bernalillo County has created a comprehensive Bernalillo Behavioral Health Initiative, developing over a dozen community programs serving persons and whereas the county is working with the providers of the Behavioral Health Initiative to continue to provide services and support for mental well, well-being of our community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize May 24th, sorry, May 21st, sorry, one more time, May 2021 as Mental Health Awareness Month, done this 20th day of April 2021 in Bernalillo County, state of New Mexico. Thank you so much, Commissioner Benson, for reading that. And I remember when I talked to you for the first time after you were elected, you said you wanted to get involved in mental health issues. And so I, I'm very pleased that you were able to read the proclamation tonight um, for Mental Health Awareness Month, May 2021. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I don't believe we have anybody to speak on that proclamation. So we will move on to Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Commissioner Barboa to present. Um, hello, and thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm um, also honored to be able to read this proclamation. The Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners, sponsored by Commissioner Charlene Piscotti, Steve, Commissioner Steve Michael Quesada, Commissioner Debbie O'Malley, myself, Commissioner Adrian Marbeau, and Commissioner Walt Benson. Whereas the National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day began in 2005 to promote positive youth development, resiliency, and recovery from behavioral health disorders, and to combat the epidemic of stigma and misinformation, which surrounds mental illness at all ages. And whereas previous focuses of National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day have addressed the relationship of childhood mental health with law enforcement, juvenile justice, child services, education and treatment in the wider community. <clears throat> and whereas positive mental health is crucial for the healthy development of children from birth, Recognizing behavioral health concerns early in a child's life allows for, help, for healthy intervention and preventions, prevents their growing up with feelings of inadequacy, agony, and isolation. And whereas behavioral health disorders in children are real, common, and treatable, but many families face the false widespread disapproval that behavioral health conditions and prescription treatment is due to bad upbringings or overdiagnosis or lazy parenting. 
And whereas the purpose of National Child Mental Health Awareness Day is to increase public awareness about the needs of children with serious mental illnesses and severe emotional disturbance and their families, provide information on evidence-based practices and encourage those who need help to seek treatment. And whereas children in Bernalillo County suffer from behavioral health issues resulting from adverse childhood experiences, and whereas the Bernalillo County Commission has recognized the need to reduce the incidence of adverse childhood experiences to ensure a healthy and prosperous future for our children and allocates $3 million in funding to community providers who have served over 58,000 clients. And whereas the Whereas the Bernalillo County Commission has recognized the need to provide services for youth who are precariously housed or homeless with a mental health or addiction diagnosis to ensure a healthy and prosperous future for our children and allocates $800,000 in funding for youth transitional living services from four community providers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes May 7th, 2021 as Children's Mental Health Awareness Day and promotes com compassionate and open-minded assistance by our community to all youth who face the real but treatable pain of childhood mental illness. Done this 20th day of April, 2021 in Bernalillo County, state of New Mexico. Thank you so much, Commissioner Barboa. Um, and I know that Bernalillo County is doing a lot to actually help um, with children's mental health um, and, and also in conjunction with UNM Hospital. So we'll be hearing from Kate Becker shortly, but um, thank you so much, Commissioner Barboa, for honoring Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. And now, now the moment we've all been waiting for, we need a drum roll. <laughs> Maybe Commissioner Casada is drum rolling. I can't really tell what's going on there. Um, County Manager, please read the acknowledgement of Mark Chavez. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, as you all know, um, Mark um, has resigned his position. Uh, as my executive uh, advisor for me and um, is pursuing his dream of uh, moving to Washington, D.C. So um, I'm very proud of him. It's very bittersweet for me and, and I know for all of you, but um, I won't be real long-winded. I think all of you who know me know how I feel about Mark. I've expressed to you many, many times and I think you probably all have a lot of the same sentiments. Um, but I do one thing I do want to say to you, Mark, and I don't want to look at him because I'll start crying, is that um, he has made me a better county manager. He really has. Um, he has just had my back, made sure um, I didn't skip a beat, uh, made sure I remembered things, um, just very conscientious. I could not ask for better. And I'm blessed to have worked side by side with him for the last five and a half years. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and read this acknowledgement. So Mark joined the county in October of 2015 as the executive administrator for the county manager's office. And since then set the bar for a professional and elite executive office. He is ending his career with Bernalillo County as the administrative advisor to the county manager as he prepares to accept a new job with the National Association of Counties in Washington, DC. We are excited that Mark has made his lifelong dream come true by continuing his professional career of serving the public and local governments with a national organization, but we will miss his presence at the county. Those that know Mark and, ha and had the privilege of working with him have experienced his compassion, sensitivity, and caring nature and witnessed his example of pride and professionalism for the entire county. Mark executed his duties as the county manager's office in the county manager's office with integrity, impartiality, and competency gained from his extensive experience in government, starting with the city of Albuquerque over 15 years ago, and his work ethic is a testament to his success. Words cannot, can neither quantify nor qualify how Mark's significant contribution has been to the county. His legacy will continue to be the inspiration for years to come. 
We would therefore like to extend our deep appreciation for your dedication, professionalism, and, and, and outstanding service to Bernalillo County. Mark, you will be missed, but we're so proud of you and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And, you know, I'm, I'd like to get in trouble with Paul Evans a second. If you could all unmute yourself and we'll give Mark a big round of applause. I don't know what it's like when everybody unmutes at the same time, but Mark, here's a big round of applause for you. <laughs> and Commissioner Vice Chair Casada, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I just would like to congratulate Mark. Uh, you know, he really made it uh, easy for me to transition into the commission when I was first elected. Um, and I, I say better than what was read, but I just want to reiterate that compassion and, uh, is a huge thing for me. And 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 he he definitely owns a lot of compassion in his soul. And I think that when people work with compassion and, and they lead with compassion, um, you know, success follows it uh, very close, uh, close behind. And Mark is that person and he deserves this. And I know the kind of human being he is and I know the kind of work ethic that he has. And so um, I know that many people have been trying to steal him since I even started four years ago. And uh, he finally gave in, but he gave in for the best thing. He gave in to follow his dreams. And, you know, somebody who has followed his dreams his whole life, I congratulate you and wish you the best and best of luck. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner O'Malley. I also want to add my congratulations to Mark. I'm very, you know, I mean, very excited for you. It's an extension of your career and it's well-deserved for sure. I first uh, recall met you when you were working for Marty Chavez and I was on the city council. You were the liaison many times between, uh, the calming liaison many times between the mayor and the, and the city council. But I just, um, you always act very professionally, uh, very respectfully. And um, I, I, I've always appreciated that whenever I reached out to you, you did what you could to, to make it easy for me to do my job and so uh, thank you very much for your service these many years. Uh, you know, I'm excited for you again and, and I hope it all goes well with you. Commissioner Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mark, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And, and I don't know you as well. I've only known you for a few months, but I, you've been genuine from day one. I, from my swearing in when I met you face to face and you gave me your personal cell. I was able to call you whenever, like you said, whenever I needed and you always answered and you were quick and, uh, and genuine. And that that is so uh, noteworthy and um, appreciated. And uh, I wish I'd work with you longer. You're gonna be missed, but congratulations and go get them. Would anyone else like to honor Mark Chavez at this time? Commissioner Barboa? Just to um, echo what everyone's already said, and in, even in this short time, and I, I just felt so welcome, and you were my first point of reference, so thank you so much. I'm sure you're going to represent New Mexico so well in D.C., and I'm thankful that um, I've had a little opportunity to work with your skill set, so congratulations, and Thanks for rep representing us up in the belly of the beast. Chief Perez, thank you, um, Commissioner. So, Mark, on behalf of the, the thousand or more men and women that represent public safety, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You've always kept public safety in high regard and done everything possible to make our lives easier and our jobs easier. And I thank you for that, my friend. All the best. Thank you, Chief. Clerk Linda Stover. I'm going to cry. Like many of you, I've known Mark for many, many years, and I wish him Godspeed on this. I know this is his lifelong dream, but I want to thank you for being my friend for all these years, Mark. It's been exceptional to work with you and be around you. And Mark, I just want to echo everything that everybody said. Congratulations. And 
I just wish you the best of everything on your journey, you know? Um, and yeah, I remember being, you know, the new commissioner <laughs> on day one and meeting with you and you were just so nice and so helpful. And you, you, you just made me feel at home, you know, really, um, it seems like there's, there's two parts of you. I think there's that part that just is really heartfelt. And there's that other part that is such a bad ass that you just get things done. And you're just like, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And you're so calm, but you just get stuff done. So I know that's going to take you wherever you want it to take you. I hope it brings you back to New Mexico sometime. And my, I guess my last question is, County Manager Julie, will there be cake? Madam Chair, Commissioners, there'll be cupcakes tomorrow. So, and I'm sorry, Friday. There'll be cupcakes on Friday. So we got something out and always uh, follow, be very mindful of social distancing. So absolutely. Mark, we'd love to hear from you. I'm going to take this off. Thank you. Madam Chair, Commissioners, I've waited for this moment for 22 years and it's finally coming true. As I move on to the next chapter of my professional life, I thank you for the memories and lessons I've learned from each of you. Friday, I will leave here knowing more than when I started. I have been strengthened by support of a team of colleagues unlike any other. Thank you for helping me to grow and allowing me to learn. Like any great team, you encouraged me assisted me, and made me better at what I do. More importantly, I leave with friends I once called colleagues. Thank you for being more than coworkers. I look forward to continuing our friendship and I wish you all the very best. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for all you've given me. Instead of saying goodbye, I'll say until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I hope we all keep your cell phone number so you can solve our problems <laughs> forever. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I know, Linda, we all have to dab our eyes and, and move on. Um, fortunately, Kate Becker is up next. We have public comment and communications, but before we hear public comment, we will proceed with communication item 5A, University of New Mexico Hospital Report, third quarter FY21, presented by Kate Becker. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, so our quarterly report is in your agenda packet. Um, it covers a lot of information and I'm happy to stand for questions on that, but I did wanna go over uh, three areas First. Um, first of all, just a brief COVID update. Um, as you know, COVID cases have been coming down um, and we attribute that largely to the vaccination plan that the state has really led and everybody's been able to partner with. Um, UNMH has been proud to have the vaccine clinic at the pit. And as of yesterday, we had given 92,144 doses of vaccine. So really happy that we've been able to support that effort in our community and help get folks back to normal-ish at least. Um, so as of this morning um, in the hospital, we were down to just 15 uh, COVID positive adults and one COVID positive pediatric patient. So it's a huge change from uh, just three months ago when we were over 150 some days. So really happy to see that moving in the right direction. Um, the second thing is the new hospital tower update. So also as of this morning um, at UH, we were at 125% of our regular capacity. Um, we tend to run really full. And what that means is that we have folks either waiting in the emergency room to get admitted or holding in the post anesthesia area after surgery, waiting for a room or sometimes in hall beds. It's, it's been a challenge for us for quite a while. And with COVID, a lot of times those were COVID patients. Now as COVID folks are moving on, we're seeing maybe people who delayed care or deferred care earlier. And so we're still extremely busy. And so, as you know, we've had plans in place for a new hospital tower for some time. And now we're well on the path to getting that done. 
So our first phase of construction, which started about a year ago now, was relaying utilities and other uh, service lines along Yale going north from Lomas. So kind of towards the back of that property. The second phase, which is underway right now, and which you've seen if you've driven down Lomas, is the building of our new parking garage. So our new parking garage will be over 1400 spaces. That's more than three times as large as our current parking garage. And so any of you who have been in our parking garage know that we're a little crowded right now and it'll be good to have a little more space for everybody. So that works underway now. Um, when that is finished, which will be about a year from now, we will be tearing down the old parking garage and also the physics and astronomy building and starting construction on the new tower which will be opening in October of 2024. So we're very excited about that. It's 96 new hospital beds, and those are all intensive care beds, um, 18 new operating rooms, and those are larger, more modern, and able to accommodate all of the folks that you know, we need as a teaching institution to be in all of these cases, and a new adult emergency room. So that gives us the chance to kind of stack those spaces. You come into the emergency room, you go up to the ORs, you go up to the ICUs, and it really improves our transport of patients and the effectiveness of that care. And behind me is a picture of what it will look like um, if you're looking west on Lomas and around sunset. So it's kind of a snazzy picture. The very bottom of the building is, of course, the entrance in the emergency department, the white stripe in the middle. That's the new operating rooms. And then the three floors above are the new beds for the ICUs. And then the bridge connects it to the existing hospital. So that's moving along on time and on budget, yay, in spite of COVID. And the third thing that I wanted to talk about, um, it's been mentioned a couple of times and it's actually really nice that we also had the Mental Health Awareness Month and the Children's Mental Health Awareness Week um, tonight is Behavioral Health and the Crisis Triage Center and our partnership with the county. So we really, really, uh, I've been happy to be able to move forward with the Crisis Triage Center planning. We've identified a site. We have now signed the contract for the architect who's doing the design work on that. And so we'll be finishing that up just in actually a couple of months, I think. And we'll be getting ready to start our construction on that space. Um, it needs to be remodeled. We're remodeling existing two existing buildings into one big space. So we'll get that work done. And we're thinking, and I'm, I'm, going from memory here and Julie will correct me, but we're thinking a year to 18 months and we'll have that facility open. So we're very excited about that. And then also really happy to be able to support the other programming efforts, um, especially, and this is really also good in light of children's mental health awareness, development of more services for transition age kids, kids who are aging out of pediatric behavioral health and moving into adult behavioral health and that system. It's a really vulnerable population and it's a time when we can lose kids going from one to the other, and we want to make sure that we have better continuity of services and better support for them. So really glad we've been able to partner with Margarita and her team to be thinking about how to do that better and support services for those folks better. So that is the three things I really wanted to call to your attention, and then happy to stand for any questions. Thank you, Kate. I know you gave a uh wonderful, more detailed, um, you and your team gave a more detailed presentation of the report where you answered, a, we grilled you, you answered a lot of our questions. So I'll just see if anybody has any questions now or any comments. And seeing, oh, Commissioner Barboa, go ahead. Thank you. Thanks again, Kate. Thanks for the information ahead of time. I love that picture behind you. Um, I think it's beautiful. And um, and I, I am very proud that in my district is really New Mexico's premier research and um, healthcare institute for the entire state. Um, and I do just, again, as I mentioned in the last meeting, want to make sure that there's a commitment to working with the surrounding community residents and really that the county maybe and city are even responsible for making sure that the traffic and how we manage this area and the community is, is important to me and obviously to the many residents I've met with recently. So thank you. I just want to plug if there's ways that could be helpful to help with that, um, to fulfilling that commitment. I'm here and, and thankful for your work. Well, thank you. And we appreciate that. And we especially appreciate how patient everybody's being because on any given day on Lomas, there's one, two or three lanes closed for folks to get back and forth to where they're going. Um, a lot of that work is connected to moving utilities. So hopefully as that finishes up, then we'll have a, a little more 
freedom to go down the path without everybody stopping to go to Golden Pride. So, <laughs> but thank you. Okay, thank you, Kate. I am not seeing any more hands raised. So thank you, and we will move on then. Um, so back to co public comment, Julianne, how many do we have signed up to speak for public comment this evening? So we did receive uh, one written comment from Ms. Geraldine Amato, and we have nobody signed up for uh, to provide live public comment this evening. Okay, okay, thank you. And I know that you have already emailed the commissioners the written public comment, so thank you. And so moving on to approval of minutes. I will move to approve the April 6, 2021 administrative meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Commissioner Benson, I saw that hand first. All in favor, wave your hand and we will have Madam County Clerk Linda Stover call the roll. Mr. Barboa. Aye. Commissioner Benson. Aye. Commissioner O'Malley. Aye. Vice Chair Casada. Vice Chair Casada. <laughs> That's an affirmative. Yeah, Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. No call. Thank you. That is unanimous. And so moving on to approval of consent agenda. Um, and Julianne, I want to make sure that I'm seeing this correctly. Um, we need resolution numbers for item what is now 8A, is that accurate, Julianne? Um, so we still have the one vote under consent for code of conduct. Okay. And then we'll move to 8A. Hold on. Do we have something on consent agenda or that? Oh, I see. Yeah. We have 7B, the code of conduct appointments. Correct? correct? Yes, correct. Okay. We can vote on that as part of the consent. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, yeah. great. Um, then I move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Thank you, Commissioner Casada. All in favor, wave your hand. And Madam Clerk, then please call the roll. Commissioner Barboa. Commissioner Aye. Bacon. Commissioner O'Malley. Aye. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. That thank passes Chair. unanimously. Commissioner Casada, did you want to say something? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Before we move on, I'd uh -huh. really like to thank uh, you know, Angel Garcia for volunteering. We've been talking about volunteering uh, tonight, and it's you know National Volunteer Week, and we talked about commissions and boards, and um, I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, this young man from our community is going to step up and uh, and work with us at, at Bernalillo County. So I just wanted to personally thank him uh, for, for stepping up and, and, you know, and being a part of the solution. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Casada. And now, Madam Clerk, we're gonna need those uh, resolution numbers for yes, eight, um, for 8A. 8A1 is FR 2021-46, 8A2 is FR 2021-47, 8A3 is FR 2021-48, and 8A4 is FR 2021-49. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. This is the fiscal year 2021 third quarter reconciliation and Pam Moon will present. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners. I'm Pamela Moon, Director of Accounting and Budget. And we requested that this item be pulled from the agenda because we would like that the commissioners only consider approving motion one, two, and four. Motion three, we asked to withdraw. Uh, we had thought that first choice was going to uh, rescind their legislative funds from 2020. And then when they got 2021 funds, they said, I guess they have enough to do the project. So they wanted to rescind that. So we would like uh, 
the commissioners to approve motions one, two, and four, and not approve motion three, which decreases the budget for that grant for the first choice. And okay. I'd be happy to go through the motions if you want, um, but. Okay. Are there any questions on any of the motions? Madam Chair, I, I have a yes. question. So, so basically we're repaying because we spent, we spend that money and now we're going to have to repay it back. So we were going to, Madam um, Commissioner O'Malley, Madam Chair, we were going to decrease the budget by that 2020 um, capital outlay funds that were allocated to first choice. But now that they feel they have sufficient funding in place, they do not, they're gonna accept those funds. So we wanna not reduce the budget by that amount for motion three. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Madam Clerk? Um, Madam Chair, I believe since we've dropped AA3, that would change the number for number four, which becomes number three, to FR 2021-48. Okay. Okay. And um, Julianne, just a procedural note, do we have to vote on dropping item three or do we just vote on the ones that are being presented, one, two, and four? I think because it's um, made part of the record that the intent is clear that we are dropping that, um, there should not be a vote to do that um, or be needed to do that. And we can just vote on one, two, and four. But I would defer to your um, county attorney, Martinez. Uh, uh, thanks, and I, th I agree with Julianne. I think what we would do is you could just move the uh, table or defer indefinitely, item number three, and then you would do a, a second a motion you could vote on that and then you do your next motion move to approve items uh, one two and four so since okay. it's sitting on the agenda you would table it indefinitely and vote on that yeah i think so it's probably okay. the easiest way since on the agenda okay okay we want to yeah we want to do everything um procedurally correct um vice chair casada did you did you have a comment i move to question? table item um eight um, three, eight, three, a three, a three. <laughs> okay. Eight, I will, three. I will second to, um, table, um, item eight, a three all in favor. Wave your hand. Okay. Thank you. So madam clerk, please call the roll on tabling, um, eight, a three. Mr. Barbone. Aye. Mr. Benson. Commissioner O'Malley? Aye. Commissioner Casada? Aye. Chairman Piscotti? Aye. And now I'll make a motion to approve um, items one, two, and four under 8A. Do I have a second? <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair Casada, for that second. All in favor? Please wave your hand. Thank you. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Let's make it official. Commissioner Bar Barboa. Aye. Commissioner Benson. Aye. Commissioner O'Malley. Aye. Vice Chair Piscotti. I'm um, Vice Chair Casada, sorry. Aye. Chairwoman Piscotti. <laughs> Thank you. Aye. Thank you. So that passes unanimously. Thank you. And now moving on to approvals. Um, International District Library, $500,000 capital contribution. Um, Commissioner Barboa will present along with Shirley Reagan and Madam Treasurer Nancy Burse would like to speak to the item. So um, Commissioner Barboa, would you like to lead us off? Yes, thank you. I, um, when we, the International District Library, that is um, a new library we're contributing here in, um, right off of Central, where the old caravan, which is actually a historic site, a lot of our families, um, I know, grew up dancing there and was a, some points a center of joy for many of our communities. And, um, and it's great to see um, 
this um, awesome library, a learning and resource um, hub placed right in the heart of the International District. I know that this has been a long time and a lot of people's work. Community, I like to recognize Bernadette Hardy and Reina Luz Juarez from the International District. And, um, and the many community members and elected officials that have put in um, to make sure that this could happen for, um, for a, a very much needed resource in our community. And I'll turn it over to the, um, for the presentation sure. of the bill. Shirley Reagan, would you like to go next? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I was just going to present the motions. Um, so the first motion, uh, Again, this was uh, funding from our 2020 um, general obligation bond election that we had, and we sold those bonds earlier this year. So um, the first motion is to authorize the county manager to approve the agreement between Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque to provide capital contributions for the design and construction of the International District Library. The second, um, motion is to authorize a county manager to execute any subsequent amendments related to and resulting from this request. Madam okay. Chair, I just wanted to make a comment that it's appropriate for Commissioner uh, Barbo to, to move it, but um, I'm really happy that we can support this, this project. I know it was on the general election bond, so the voters approved it, but uh, we also did the same thing for the library the west side, that's the uh, Patrick Baca Library Commissioner, then Commissioner uh, Art de la Cruz and myself uh, uh, were very happy to support that project as well. It's important to support their libraries within all the districts and this one in particular is, and it, this is gonna really, I think give a real bo big boost to that area. And it looks like a beautiful facility. And so I uh, just, you know, congratulations to the International District and, you know, of course, Councillor Pat Davis had a lot to do with it as well. And so, but I'm really happy for you, uh, Commissioner Barboa. This is going to be a real nice feather in the cap. Commissioner O'Mel, your sound was fading out. I think we got most of that. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, we, we do love our libraries. And I know Madam Treasurer now wants to say a few words. So go ahead, um, Madam Treasurer Nancy Burse. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Piscotti and all the commissioners, uh, especially on this item for approving uh, this money for the International District Library. Um, as I've spoken before, when there was Commissioner Colley, um, this has been a, a project 15 to 20 years in the making. I was actually trying to think of the first meeting, community meeting that we had, um, after 2002, when we talked about the International District rebranding on what our community needed. And of course, a public library came up as one of our top priorities. Um, at that time, and because it's been so long, I just wanted to mention three significant uh, women leaders in our community that were very supportive of getting this started. Um, one is um, Bobby Jewell, and uh, she was a, a former APS um, educator and trained educator and founding member of the La Mesa uh, Community Improvement Association. Uh, she raised five beautiful children, uh, one of which is the Honorable Tommy Jewell, uh, who, as you heard earlier, uh, sits on one of your boards uh, and was the first black state judge uh, nominated. So there's distinction very much so in that family. Uh, also, uh, Adelamar Alcantara, uh, she was um, the founder of the New Mexico Asian Family Center. She was a UNM demographer uh, she created and was director of the UNM Geospatial and Population Studies, and in 2018 received the Si Se Puede Award from Dolores Huerta. And uh, she, was, she was very much 
appreciative and, and recognized for her activism in the Asian community. Uh, lastly, I'd like to recognize and mention Alvorn Clifton. Uh, she worked in the nursing field and as a cook. Uh, she was a civil rights leader uh, from way back <laughs> and a community activist for Trumbull Village. Uh, many of the politicians previously and of her time called her the mayor of the Southeast Heights. Uh, she was very, very active. Uh, she also sat, out, sat on the board of the Greater Albuquerque Housing Partnership. In 2001, she received the New Mexico Distinguished Public Service Award. And if you were really, really honored, you would receive one of her homemade sweet potato pies. So thank you so much. Those are women that have already passed uh, but I know they're looking down on us, uh, really thanking you for continuing the work that community has started. So thank you so much. Thank you for those wonderful words, Madam Treasurer. And um, yeah, and adding to the history and the story, um, it's, it's amazing. And I, I'm all in favor of this library. I think it's totally needed in in that area in the international district. So um, I, I, I was honored, I guess, last year to bring my shovel to the groundbreaking. And, and I brought my good shovel, not my everyday shovel, because I wanted to, it to be really special. So on that note, um, let's, let's go ahead and vote. I'll I'll move to, you know, Commissioner Barbara, why don't you move to approve? <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank you. Um, and thank and, you, um, Treasurer Burst, for that beautiful history. Uh, thank you so much for bringing that in today. And I so move. Okay, excellent. Does anyone else want a second? I know I've been talking a lot about libraries, so if anybody else wants to take it. Commissioner O'Malley, thank O'Malley you. Seconds. And so all in favor, wave your hand. And Madam Clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Barboa. Aye. Commissioner Benson. Aye. Mr. O'Malley. Aye. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. Thank you. That passes unanimously, of course. <laughs> and so on to uh, Fleet and Facilities Management Amendment to the Memorandum of Understanding for the Operation of One Civic with City of Albuquerque. Lisa Manuel to present. Hi, Madam Chair, Commissioners. I'm Lisa Manuel, Director of Fleet and Facilities. Um, this, uh, due to a joint power, a joint ownership for one civic between Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque, a memorandum of understanding has been established to designate responsibilities and cost sharing associated with one civic. Um, as unforeseen costs arise, maintenance of the facility above the budget specified in the original MOU um, need to be addressed via amendment. So tonight I am request, uh, bringing a, an item towards you and requesting motions to authorize the county manager to approve the amendment to the memorandum of, of understanding for the operation of one civic um, to include our share of payment for an emergency generator of 591, $591,426, the cargo elevator, $152,000, and the cafe area for $41,000. Um, in a nutshell, the, um, the emergency generator has been an issue since about 2019, and staff, county staff in the city have just negotiated what our share of um, that payment was. Similarly, the cargo elevator since 2000, early 2020 has been an issue. So the 152,000 that we're requesting in this amendment is our share of that. The cafe had a, um, the downstairs cafe in One Civic had a pretty major roach infestation and there was a lot of demolition and um, uh, the repair of some leaking water lines in the wall. Our share of that was 41,000. 
So the, uh, the amendment, in addition to authorizing the county manager to approve the amendment, it's also the second motion is to authorize the county manager to negotiate and execute any subsequent amendments related to this request. And with that, I stand for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. Um, it sounds like what we would be approving is paying our, our share for the repairs of those items. Madam okay. Chair. Uh, did somebody say something? <laughs> I move for approval oh. and, go and go by one Civic Plaza. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and Commissioner Benson, did you have a comment or question before we move on? Uh, question, Madam Chair. How long have we been carrying that debt that is owed? Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Benson, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Sure. How long have we been carrying this debt? We owe um, this money for half of the repairs that the city's paid. Here. Uh, Madam uh, Chair, Commissioner, um, the, the emergency generator has been an issue since um, 2019. It did take the city um, a number of months, I'm going to say probably about eight months, to um, get a design on that. In the interim, they, they moved in a temporary generator. The um, cargo elevator, um, the work actually is just starting April, just started April 1st. So while we've known that that elevator needed to be have some repair done for probably the last nine months, um, the, the construction actually started earlier this month. The cafe, um, I wanna say that's probably been repaired. Already been, that work has been done, that repair has been made and that was made about six, seven months ago. Okay, thank you, just uh, appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? We had a motion to approve from Vice Chair Casada. Is there a second? Thank you, Commissioner Benson for the second. All in favor of approval, wave your hand. And Madam Clerk, it's back to you for the roll call. Commissioner Barbo. Aye. Commissioner Benson. Aye. Commissioner O'Malley. Mr. O'Malley. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. Thank you. Okay, so that passes unanimously with, it looks like um, Commissioner O'Malley is absent for this vote. And so just when you thought this meeting was over, I'm gonna take you for a little trip down memory lane. A couple of hours ago, we had a closed litigation meeting and so we are going to, um, I'm going to read statement number one. I offer the following statement regarding the closed litigation meeting held Tuesday, April 20, 2021 at 2.45 p.m. Only those items described on the published notice and agenda for the closed meeting held on April 20, 2021 were discussed at the closed meeting. I need a motion for approval of this statement and it will become part of the minutes of this meeting. Thank you, Vice Chair Casada. Um, I will second, all in favor. And Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Barboa. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Mr. O'Malley. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. Thank you, that passes unanimously for zero. Closed meeting statement number two. I move that the Bernalillo County attorney be authorized to proceed with the matters discussed in the closed meeting held on Tuesday, April 20, 2021, within the parameters set by this commission. Is there a second? Thank you, Commissioner Vice Chair Casada. All in favor? Wave your hand. Thank you. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Barbone. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Mr. O'Malley. Vice Chair Casada. Aye. Uh, Madam Chair Piscotti. Aye. 
and that passes unanimously for zero. Um, so discussion, are there any items up for discussion this evening? Seeing none, um, the next commission meetings, um, Tuesday, May 20, I'm sorry, now <laughs> Commissioner Benson, you've got me on this 2020 thing kick. May 11, 2021, zoning meeting at 3 p.m. via Zoom. And then that will be followed Tuesday, May 11, 2021 by the administrative meeting at 5 p.m. via Zoom. And if there is no other business, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Namaste, everybody. Have a good night. Take care.